What's up readers? I'm back with another video. Today I'm going to be doing a little review slash why you should read on The Passage by Justin Cronin. This one came out in 2010 and it's... I only... Sorry, I'm moving some stuff. I read it last year around, I think February, March, almost around this time last year. And it, I, I really, really enjoyed it. And the, the main reason I wanted to make this video was because at the end of March here, I had a little extra time on my hands. So I already read my reading schedule. So I threw in an extra, an extra book. And that was book two in the Passage Trilogy, The Twelve. And I really, really, really blew through this, really enjoyed it. It was, uh... It reminded me of why I loved the passage so much to begin with and being into it as being so into it as I was I immediately scheduled the city of mirrors book three the conclusion of the trilogy for April already started it already about 10 10 chapters in and it's it's right there with the 12 where I am just I'm I'm floored you know pretty much like I'm I'm really enjoying it but this video is um, going to be exclusively about the passage and why I think you should read it or why I think you would enjoy it as much as I did. First things first, this one is, it's about vampires. So, yeah, you know, if you, if, I mean, if you don't like vampires, I think that you'd still really enjoy this book. I've said it before on uh, maybe one or two of my past videos, but this book was the only book I've ever read that was able to capture horror, fantasy, and sci-fi all in one and do it flawlessly where I, you know, from chapter to chapter, I'm like, man, this is just the best, the best parts of fantasy, the best parts of sci-fi, the best parts of horror. And the closest book that I've ever read to this is The Stand by Stephen King. So if you're a fan of The Stand, you're going to love this. And if you're a fan of like Stephen King in general, I feel like this one's really a good read for you. Because it's big and it's dense. But reading it, when I initially read it, I kept thinking, I was like, man, uh, Justin Cronin is is reminding me a lot of Stephen King like his his character work especially is probably the only thing I've ever read on the level of Stephen King where he's developing his characters he's making you hate him he's making you love him he's making you care about him one way or another which you know I love good characters in a story uh real quick I'll just do like a quick uh summary of what it's about roughly with with no spoilers so the premise in the beginning so when he wrote he wrote this in 20 2010 but it is set in 2016 so it was you know when he wrote it he was writing it as the near future and we learn about uh this thing this uh project by the government called project noah which they are looking for a species of bat in South America where this bat, this specific species of bat has this virus that can prolong life or at least has the properties to prolong life. And ultimately, from what I remember, they're trying to, they're trying to um, create a, like an anti-aging, uh, immunity boosting, drug based off of this virus that is in this strain of bat so yeah that you know that sounds like a great idea let's let's tamper around with the virus that comes from a bat i i ironically thinking back on it i'm like hey miss you know he said it in 2016 he was only you know three years off of the virus that's shaken up the whole world but so yeah there it, early on you're following uh fanning tim fanning who is uh, one of the two, I think there's two, there might be three, uh, the main guys leading this expedition in South America to find this bat and to get a sample of this virus so they can, you know, start doing 
nefarious deeds, you know, that the military does. But, but you know, it, shit hits the fan uh, pretty early on in this. This one, this book mainly, I think it's in two parts, like two distinct parts. So not only is this an apocalyptic book, it is also a post-apocalyptic book. Because early on, the whole, um, I don't even know if it's halfway through, but I, I, from what I remember, I think it's around like 35-40% through. Up until that point, we are just in 2016 and the start of this outbreak. And then there is a 93-year uh, jump forward in time. So that's why it's apocalyptic and post-apocalyptic, because... We get to see 93 years into the future after the outbreak in this post-apocalyptic world, post-virals, which is what they call, they refer to the vampires as virals. I mean, they also use the term vampire, but viral is a little more fitting. And, well, there's also a third, there's like, there is uh, like documents that you read that are from a third time period, which is a thousand years after after the, uh, 2016. So that is not really, you don't spend any time really in that in that time thing. You are, you're just reading from like a journal, I think. So I think there's just journal entries and stuff set a thousand years in the future. So you don't know anything about that. It's just small little snippets here and there. So it's not really uh, spoilers at all, but... Yeah, the two main timelines are 2016 and then 93 years after, which in the book they refer to it as AV, after virus. Um, so yeah, I mean, obviously doing the math, you're talking about like the 2100s. But that's about as deep as I'm going to get into the actual plot of the book because I want people to read it and I want them to enjoy it and... Me, personally, I don't like knowing anything about a book before going in. I mean, that's about as much as I would want to know about a book before I start it. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about, like, the actual book itself in terms of pace. I thought this was really well paced. Where, where in Stephen King's The Stand, you see this slow, gradual... You know, you're reading The Stand, you're reading these chapters, and you could sl you slowly start feeling like the... The virus is slowly engulfing and spreading, and it's almost a slow burn in the stand until you get to the actual like post-apocalyptic part. Well, in this, you start off with these this cast of characters in the beginning. You got FBI agent Walgast. You got Amy, a little orphan girl who's like six or seven, I think she's five or six years old. And you got Fanning, the guy looking for the virus. And then, uh, you know, various military personnel sprinkled in there but whereas the Stephen King's the stand is a slow build towards the world being over this is pretty much like overnight it is you know the it there's no stopping it and then when you get the second timeline you know 93 years into the future that's really where the fantasy element comes in for me also like the post-apocalyptic sci-fi element dystopian elements where you just you're introduced to a whole new cast of characters and you see their way of living 93 years after this crazy apocalyptic event but what what justin cronin was able to do with the vampire genre is just i mean it's genius i love what he what he did here and i love how uh, unique and fresh it felt on the vampire genre but also at the weird at the with the weird juxtaposition there it almost felt familiar he did not you know he's not giving you angelus from buffy he's not giving you spike where the, where if you couldn't tell like you know you watch buffy the vampire slayer and you see spike walking around if you if nobody knew he was a vampire nobody would know no you know you know what the virals are in this because they are more like creatures than they are humans they glow they like to hang upside down like bats so they're very more animalistic and and creatures than they are you know humans which i really enjoyed because vampires are supposed to be terrifying and 
these definitely are. It, uh, it, I can't say enough about how good Justin Cronin's writing is in this one. I mean, it was very, very good in the 12. His character work, like I said, rivals Stephen King, but this one was just so, it just felt so polished. It felt like you were reading a guy who was 30 years into his career and finally decided to write his, his masterpiece, you know, but it, I, I looked and he, you know, this was only his third book that he ever wrote. So, if, oh, also, it kind of felt, I've only read one Michael Crichton, which was the Andromeda Strain, so maybe that's where I'm drawing this comparison from, but to me, it, it felt almost like if Stephen King and Michael Crichton collaborated and wrote a novel or a, a trilogy together, or just, you know, this novel. But yeah, it, uh, it, it was a page turner, it was engrossing. I, I was, as the book was building towards the, the climax, I was just, you know, I couldn't put it down. And the 12 picked up a very good, very good continuation. Very good. There was, when, I think the reason I had shelved the other two for so long is I thought it was just, it would fall into that, that thing where book one in a series is always, not always, but it's, it's, most of the time, it's a lot better than the other books. But, yeah, so I think that was the reason I kind of put off reading the other two. But I am so glad that I just decided on a whim to pick up the 12 because it, do it dove me right back into this. And on in all honestly, honesty, I wanted to just reread this before I read the third book. Just because it had been a year. But it's a big boy. It's, you know, 700 plus pages. I figure once I finish... City of Mirrors here, you know, maybe next year I'll do just a whole month where I reread the trilogy because this one is just a, I mean, it's, it's a classic already. It's a, it's going to be one of these books that I think people don't appreciate when it came out. And then, you know, 30, 40 years from now, people are going to look back and really understand that what Justin Cronin did was, was really special. So yeah, um, if you're a fantasy fan, you're going to love this. If you're a horror fan, you're going to love it. If you love sci-fi, post-apocalyptic, dystopian stuff, you're going to love this. Uh, I think I read somewhere. I forgot where I read it from. I thought it was one of the blurbs on the back, but I'm not seeing it here. Um, I remember seeing a blurb that said this was like Blood Meridian meets The Stand. And after reading it, I mean, it definitely feels like The Stand, but it didn't. maybe it was The Road meets The Stand. I don't know. But I always hate those type of blurbs that compare two things to try to, you know, equate to the third. But they weren't wrong in, in the stand comparisons in terms of the, the cast of characters, the depth of the world, the world building. Uh, yeah, Stephen King actually has a giant blurb on the back here. It's one of his better, it's one of his better blurbs. Um, yeah. Can't recommend this enough, and if you can, pick up the whole trilogy, because book two was really, really, really a wild ride, and book three, uh, you know, ten chapters in so far, it's it's just as enthralling as these other two have been, and I hope he sticks to landing. I know he's going to, because he, uh, I don't see how he can miss at this point. But yeah, The Passage, Justin Cronin. Pick it up, read it, enjoy it. Let me know down below if you've read it or you've thought about reading it. Let me know if you've read the whole trilogy and your thoughts on it. And let me know if there's anything you've read that... If you've read this, let me know if there's anything else out there that is similar. Because I haven't found it yet. So yeah, until next time guys. You know, like, subscribe, do all that jazz. And um, my next video will probably be a review of the 12. So look for that. And yeah, just stick around for more.